Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video and today we're talking about the battery life on iOS 18.3. Now, if you have updated your device to the new iOS 18.3 and you're not satisfied with the battery life that you're getting out of your device, I will show you guys a few tips and tricks that will help you improve the battery life of your iPhone running the new iOS 18.3. Now, the first tip will be to actually just wait be patient this has been confirmed by apple when you install a new update on your iphone the first three to four days maybe even five will give you a bit of worse battery life because the update is working in the background so you will have to be patient and wait for a few days the next thing you want to make sure you do is head on to your settings and then go to general and go to software update. Make sure you have the latest release of iOS 18.3 installed on your device. I'm talking here about people that have installed the betas of iOS 18.3 or maybe even the RC version because we had another release after the RC version. Just make sure that you have the latest release installed right here. Another thing you want to make sure to do is update your apps. Now, as you can see right here, I updated my apps just like yesterday, and now I already have 16 updates. That's because when new releases of iOS come out, there will also be a ton of updates from different apps, especially the bigger apps will all release new updates. So the apps are more compatible with the new iOS release. So make sure you also have all of your apps up to date. Now, one thing with iOS 18.3 is that if you have a device with Apple intelligence, then Apple intelligence will by default be enabled on your iPhone once you have installed iOS 18.3. Now, if you're not using Apple intelligence and you're not planning to use it, then go ahead and turn it off. So head on to Apple intelligence and Siri, and this is basically the kill switch for Apple intelligence. You just tap that button, you turn it off and you completely turn off the Apple intelligence features on your iPhone. Now, another thing that's really interesting is the new control center on iOS 18. So you probably have seen like a few third party apps that actually offer like different widgets for your control center. And there are some that actually offer like animated control center widgets. Like we have a few different here that you can add to your control center and they are basically animated. They will just like move around on the control centers, have different animations. I suggest you don't use those. You only use those that you actually need because those will require CPU power. At the same time, of course, when requiring CPU power, it means that they're working and they also consume battery. You have to also take a look at your apps. So a lot of apps might just drain battery out of your iPhone. Those are apps that are maybe poorly coded or not have been updated for a really long time. Now the way for you to actually find those apps is go to your settings and then go under the battery section. And right here you will see a list of your apps and how much battery they have consumed. Now my apps right here are pretty normal because the apps that I use the most will be right here at the top. Top. But if you see apps that are consuming a ton of battery are here at the top of the list, but you're not using them that much, that means that those apps are consuming way too much battery. So I suggest you to delete those apps and maybe just replace them with a better alternative from the app store. Now the same goes for widgets as well. Widgets might also drain a ton of battery. Now we have a ton of different widgets, the one that's ones that are actually animated and ones that need to be updated, like the weather widgets, they need to be updated all the time or the new news widgets, something like that. So just be careful with the amount of widgets that you're using on your home screen. If you have a few that you actually need and you use daily, you can keep them, but don't just add widgets to the home screen because they will also consume a ton of battery. Now, one really interesting new feature of iOS 18 can be found right here under accessibility. You will find a something called vocal shortcuts. Now with vocal shortcuts, what you will be able to do is actually just perform a shortcut, actually just say something like a word and then it will perform an action. So you enable it right here. You can add an action. So you basically say a word here and then you can just run like a shortcut, maybe an action from the system right here, whatever you want. And you use that again, just like a vocal shortcut to actually implement that 
action that you have set right there. But what's really interesting, you notice right there, it's using my microphone, even when I'm out of the settings app and I'm not actually using that feature at all, it's still using my microphone right there, which indicates that actually will be using a ton of battery. You can see the microphone is being used right there without the need to be used at all. Another setting that I suggest you turn off right here is music haptics. Now, if you're someone that actually needs this feature, turn it on, of course, you can use it. It's a great feature that Apple has added with iOS 18, but if you're not actually in need of this feature, go ahead and turn it off because this feature, of course, will use the haptic engine and that does consume a ton of battery. Another feature right here under accessibility that I always suggest people turn off on their iPhone is sound recognition. Now, just notice like the features that I'm talking about here and just telling you to turn off. All of these are features that most of them will actually just require them to be active in the background. Those features just, just drain the battery out of your iPhone. Like sound recognition, if you have it turned on and you really, really need this feature and you're using it, Okay, but check it out if you have it turned on and you know you don't use it, make sure you have that turned off. Next up, we're going under the general settings and let's go to AirDrop right here. First of all, bringing devices together, a feature I don't recommend having turned on. Probably you have used it once. Once you got it on your device, just to try it out and never use it again. So it's a feature that I think should be turned off. Now, having this feature turned on, it sometimes just does enable by accident. Most of the time, of course, it does that without you even intending to send something to someone to just go ahead and completely turn it off. Another feature that most of the time will just go on by accident is back tap. This is another feature that I suggest you go ahead and turn off. Now, most of these features people will just set up to use or try on their iPhone, then just leave them on like that and maybe never even use them. So double tap, triple tap, if you have any actions set up here and you're not really need them or just don't use them at all, make sure you select the non option right here which means that they're now completely turned off. Moving on here under display and brightness, you go here and you will have a feature called rise to wake. Now what this feature will do is that it will wake up the screen of your iPhone automatically once you pick your iPhone from a table or you take your iPhone out of your pocket. It's pretty cool, I guess, but that of course will just drain the battery out of your iPhone. It's all the time active waiting for that actual movement to turn on the screen of your iPhone. Sometimes you maybe just pick up your iPhone from the table, place it in your pocket. It will just unnecessarily turn on the screen of your iPhone and consume battery. So make sure you go ahead and turn it off from here. And just right here above rise to wake, we also have auto lock, another feature that should actually be enabled. So you will have the option here from 30 seconds to never, but don't use that, use maybe 30 seconds or one minute. And you can see right here, if I choose never, it even says right here that your iPhone may use more energy with this setting. So you will actually have right there a warning from Apple. So go ahead and choose one of the options above. Moving back under the accessibility settings right here, and let's just go to Siri, let's find Siri, there it is. We have an option here called always listen for the word, you know the word. So basically what you're doing here is allowing Siri to just be active on the background and always prepare to listen to that word. That means that this will work even when your iPhone is facing down on the table or you have it on your pocket, it will always be active and wait for that command and most likely, most of the time, it will just turn on by accident. So go ahead and turn that off as well. And now let's move on here under sounds and haptics. So when you go to sounds and haptics here, you will have the haptics options. Now I have switched this to never play. This is how I keep it all the time because I just don't like the vibrations from the device here. But I suggest that you either use this or if you need to have haptics on your device, at least choose play in silent mode. 
which means that when your iPhone is on ringer mode, you get the sound and not the haptics. When it's on the silent mode, of course, you don't get the sound, you just get the haptics. That way, you're probably cutting in half the amount of haptics that you get from your device, meaning that you will save a ton of battery because you know the haptic engine is one of the things that does consume the most battery on an iPhone. Moving on to the seller data here. So go to your seller data, voice and data, and you will have here your options, the LTE, 5G on and 5G auto. Now, if you're on a place where you know you have great 5G coverage, of course, you can just switch it on. But if you know that you don't have really good 5G coverage, just make sure you use LTE or 4G, whatever you have. It's much, much better. Just having your iPhone always trying to connect to 5G will absolutely drain the battery of your iPhone. Just if you're doing that, just notice when you switch to LTE here and turn off 5G, you will actually notice how much more battery you will get out of your iPhone. Next up, we're moving under general and one of the classics when it comes to saving battery on your iPhone background app refresh. You go here, you have to check the list of apps that you have right here. Like there are a ton of apps that don't actually need to be refreshing in the background. You can just go ahead and turn them off from here like wallpaper apps, clock apps, they don't need to be refreshing in the background and consuming battery. Make sure you have these turned off as more much of them. Of course, there will be a few apps that you might need to have be refreshing in the background, but most of them need to actually be turned off. Another thing here is Bluetooth. Now, if you're not using Bluetooth, a longer day, like a lot of times, maybe with your car or other devices, just keep it turned off and turn it off from settings, not from the control center. Go here and turn it off completely. Of course, the Bluetooth connection does consume batteries, always like scanning for devices nearby. So if you're just not using it, make sure to turn it off as well. Next are location services. Of course, one of the biggest battery drainers on a mobile device, make sure you go ahead and check out your location services and see how you have them set up. Make sure that you take a look at this list right here and just configure them the right way. So you will have here a few different options from Never, which of course should be most of the apps because most of the apps don't have any business with having your location. That should be the default basically for most of the apps. And then you will have Ask Next Time, which means that the app will ask you every time it wants to use your location or while using the app, which means that only when you use the app, it uses your location and turn off precise location for most of the apps. You can leave it on just for apps that do require precise location, like navigating apps, maps and things like that. Otherwise, just keep it turned off. And last but not least are system services. So just at the location services, scroll all the way down. You will have here system services and you will have a few things here like device maybe device management you can turn off alerts and shortcut automations right there home kit if you're not using it motion calibration and distance you can turn that off setting a time zone you can turn that off and significant locations as well and then you will also have here iphone analytics and map improvements you can just turn off all of these options and save a ton of battery on your device so that's basically it for this video guys hope you guys enjoyed the video leave a like if you did and of course subscribe for more videos like this and i will see you on the next one